Hello fellow crafters and welcome to Max TM Crafting. The topic of this video is uh, brick walls. Stay a while and listen. Not just brick walls, but all the stone walls and the main techniques I have used over the years. Everything you see in this video is scattered here and there on my channel. This is a compendium of some of the techniques I have used over the years. Each of them is detailed in a specific video that you can find in the description box below. Let's start with single brick walls, a technique that can give fantastic results, but can be tedious and sometimes frustrating. My advice is to apply this technique when you have limited surfaces. You can have fantastic results in no time. Brick textures are made by squeezing pre-cut bricks in your hands. The result can vary, even a lot depending on the density of the foam you are using. High density foams are structured more easily, while more elastic foams require a more incisive mechanical interaction intervention to maintain the texture. This technique becomes very interesting and efficient if you use hot glue to fix some basic bricks, then completing the work with PVA glue or tacky glue. What you see now is instead part of my favorite technique. It involves directly engraving the bricks on the foam using a system that serves to create a fantasy and not trivial pattern. This illustrative diagram was part of my old tutorial number 3, but it can be misleading, so I'll show you this technique step by step. First we draw the horizontal lines, remembering to leave spaces to insert bricks out of line. After identifying some areas, let's start by defining four more bricks around them. We have thus obtained areas that will break up the monotony of the bricks. Remember that this technique is all the more effective the deeper and more clearly defined the dividing lines between the bricks are. After adding the texture with the aluminum foil technique, I move on to complete everything. The winning move is the extraction of some bricks to give greater dynamism to the piece. I define some bricks with the cutter and extract the material a little at a time, being careful not to damage the adjacent bricks. Now I will be able to insert individual bricks which will partially protrude from the wall. On the contrary, I can also press some bricks, creating a bas relief effect. I add some cracks and the wall is ready to be painted. Here you see a basic technique with a gray scale. Despite the simple painting, the piece sells itself great.
One of the boldest technique I tried was the use of molds to create curved walls. I took some time and created a segment of individual brick wall. As I said at the beginning, this is a technique that gives the best final results. Little trick, when you build the wall, proceed in height and mark from time to time some reference lines that allow you to maintain a certain horizontal regularity. For more realism I used fine sand, but baking soda can also be used. Once dry, I dipped my wall in silicone. I created a mold that can be used with resin. To create a curved resin wall, it is necessary to extract the piece about 5 minutes before final drying. Here the resin is still warm and malleable. The result you see is part of my video That Shelter in the Swamp. You can find it in the description box down below. Now let's take a step towards a more advanced method. As a last technique I show you one of my best works, that is the wall of rocks. I start by beating the foam violently with the crumpled aluminum ball. In addition to creating the first texture, this step serves to make the foam more elastic. Now I start to tear off irregular pieces of foam with my nails. Once I have a fair amount, I squeeze these pieces as I would with single bricks.
Now I'm ready to glue the individual rocks. This method is very fast because I don't have to give a regular look to the wall. I now use water mixed with PVA glue and warm grey paint mixed with baking soda. I use it uh, as a base coating but also as a wall filler. Once dry, this cover makes the foam rock hard and the texture is definitely very realistic. The biggest asset when it comes to pieces like this is painting. A good paint job can make the difference between a mediocre piece and a fantastic one. Once the base coating is dry, I proceed with an intense black paint wash. Now we have to give the rocks some colored reflections using blue, green, brown, but we can also use pink and yellow. Once the harlequin effect is complete, I'm going to cover everything 50% with a semi-dry brush using a warm grey. Now let's do a wash with white mixed with shiny and very diluted Mod Podge to give shine to the surface of the rocks. The last step is another black wash using a sponge to remove excess from the surface. Now we are ready for the final dry brush, from top to bottom with a light grey.
flocking, why not? Thanks for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Till next time, happy crafting!